Good morning. Praise the Lord. It's good to be with you today. Thank you for joining us. This is Pastor Randy Richardson with the Bible Heritage Pentecostal Holiness Church in Waycross, Georgia. We're going to start off singing a song that says, I saw the light, I saw the light, no more in darkness, no more in night. Hallelujah. I saw the light, I saw the light, no more in darkness, no more in night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I wondered so aimless, life filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Jesus came and a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light, I saw the light, I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Just like a blind man wonders. I claim for my own And like the blind man That God gave back to sight Praise the Lord I saw the light I saw the light I saw the light No more in darkness No more in night Now I'm so happy No sorrow inside Praise the Lord I saw the light I was a fool Wonder astray, straight is the gate and narrow the way. Now I have traded the wrong for the right. Praise the Lord, I saw the light, I saw the light, I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Brother, we'll be 
Today is the last Sunday of the year 2020, and so we're praying that 2021 will not be as bad as 2020 for a lot of folks. And uh, so if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, we're going to begin in verse number 46. I've entitled this message, How to Receive Your Healing and Keep It. How to Receive Your Healing and Keep It. Starting next Sunday, we're going to start a series on deliverance and what God's Word has to say in the area of getting folks set free from demonic oppression. Hallelujah. Let's look at Mark 10, verse 46 through 52. Now they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded them to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I might receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Jesus is traveling from the city of Jericho. A great multitude is following him. He's got enough sick folks and demon-possessed folks and folks oppressed by the devil that he doesn't need any extras to come along. But here's this man, blind Bartimaeus, and he wants to have his sight. He wants to be able to see. And so he cries out to the Lord, and finally the Lord hears him. And Jesus calls him forward and says, what do you want me to do for you? He says that I might receive my sight. Now, folks, blind Bartimaeus gave us the most absolute best prayer to pray when we want to receive healing and keep it. It's found in verse 47 when he said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. You know that we all need the mercy of God. We need the mercy of God to save us, to fill us with the Holy Ghost. We need the mercy of God to sustain us and to protect us, to provide for us. But thank God in the atonement of Jesus Christ is the power to heal us. And so just as Bartimaeus teaches us how we need to cry out to the Lord, you need to start crying out to the Lord to heal your body of the aches and pains that you're experiencing. You need to lay your hands every night, every morning on your hips or your knees or whatever it is that's giving you trouble on your liver, on your pancreas, on your head if you're having migraines. If you're having problems with your blood pressure, just lay your hands on your chest and just ask the Holy Ghost to heal your body. Son of David, have mercy on me. I didn't deserve salvation, but Jesus saved me. I've eaten fatty foods, fried fused foods, abused my body, didn't get a good sleep through the years, lack of nutrition, and very little exercise. I don't deserve to be healed. But thank God he didn't say I had to do everything perfect. He just said, cry out to me, son of David, have mercy on me. I don't deserve healing, but glory to God, I can receive healing. I've been healed of many things in my lifetime. God has touched my body over and over and over again. He's ministered healing to me in so many different ways. 
We've already established over the last several weeks that God provided healing in the atonement. We saw that the Lord healed the Israelites in the Old Testament and gave them many wonderful promises in the scripture saying, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And we saw where he healed the people while he was on the earth. And we saw that uh, the only people that didn't get healed, they had a lack of faith and didn't believe in him. We saw uh, he, he healed as a direct result of Isaiah's prophecy saying he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. We saw that healing continued through the book of Acts. And we know that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He changes not. And we have further established week before last that it is God's will to heal you. Hallelujah. So this morning I want to focus on how. How do we receive the healing? If I had a $50 bill in my hand this morning and I extended it out and said here whoever can run up here first and grab this $50 bill can have it boy you'd be jumping out of your seats you'd be wheeling your walkers down here whatever you had to do to get to this $50 bill but until you took it in your hand you have not received the $50 bill. You can sit in your pew and you can say, I want it all day long and give it to me. But the condition is you've got to receive it in Jesus name. Remember Hebrews eleven six says without faith, it's impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them and those who diligently seek him. We've got to diligently seek him for our healing. We've got to diligently seek him for our deliverance. Once you have that understanding, you have the faith to believe God, and it's time to be healed. You say, well, how? How, how do I get healed then? How do I receive? Let me give you some scriptural examples today of how there's many ways a person can be healed. In Mark 16, verse 17 and 18, it says that these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Glory to God. One of the first ways that people are healed is through the laying on of hands. Luke 440 says, When the sun was setting, all those who had any that were sick with various diseases brought them to him, Jesus. And he, Jesus, laid his hands on every one of them and healed them main method that Jesus healed the sick was the laying on of hands. He spoke the word many times and sent his word and healed them. But most of the time they touched. Well, what does that scripture say that we read in Mark 16 verse 18? It says they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall they shall not they might not I hope so, but they shall recover. Now, what does it mean to recover? It means you start getting better. You start getting better. You know, a lot of healings are not instantaneous. In fact, most that I've experienced in my life are not instantaneous. There, I, I've seen God do tremendous miracles, but most of the time, people are healed by faith and as you do what the word says, God does his part and heals the sick. We had a dear saint of God in one of the churches that we pastored. And, and, and she had terrible diabetes. And she had uh, contracted some sort of uh, something in her body. We, don't, we still don't know what the problem.
problem was, but she got to the point where she couldn't get up out of her chair. She had to be lifted up and put in the bed and had to be lifted out of the bed and put back in the chair through the day. And, and this dear woman was a workhorse of a person. She was not a lazy or lay around kind of lady. Uh, but she was sick, 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 and just could not move. And so uh, this went on for over a month and, and went into two months and then went into the third month. And, and, and I was missing her in church, and, and I got up that morning, and the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, I want you to go to her house, and I want you to tell her that you've come to heal her today. And that she's going to recover. That we're going to lay hands on you, and you're going to be, you're going to recover. And and we went around the house, or what the Lord showed me was to go around that house seven times, to walk around that house seven times, and to go through and anoint every door and every window in her house and her bed and her chair, and just plead the blood of Jesus, claim the precious blood of Jesus over her body. Well. My mind began to say to me, well, Randy, you've lost your mind. There's nothing that says you've got to walk seven times around. Just go pray for the lady. But it kept coming to me. You've got to walk around seven times around her house. And so I, I was struggling. I was going to announce in church anybody wanted to go with me after, after service to, to load up in the cars and we would head over to her house and that God had told me to walk around seven times. But I was so reluctant to do it and I was just struggling in my mind and, 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 and this dear elderly man got up and came to the front and he said pastor can I share something that the Holy Ghost gave me and I said yes and, and he said the Holy Ghost told me that we're supposed to go to sister so and so's house and we're supposed to walk around it seven times and anoint the doors and anoint the windows and boy I began to shout and praise the Lord and I said that's a confirmation of what the Holy Ghost gave me and we're going to go do it right after service and boy I had the faith then I knew God was going to touch her and that's exactly what we did we about 10 of us we went around to the uh, her house and, and I walked in there and she could hardly hold her head up and, and I just said to her daughter God says he's going to heal you today He's going to touch you. We're going to lay hands on you. But we got to first walk around your house seven times. Don't know why, but the Lord said do it. And we got to obey the Lord because healing comes through obedience, okay? So we walked around that house seven times. We went in the house. We anointed every doorpost. We anointed every window. We anointed her bed. We anointed her chair. We obeyed the Holy Ghost. We went over. We took authority. We, we commanded that spirit of infirmity to leave her home in Jesus' name and leave her body in Jesus' name and heal whatever damage was done by the enemy. Well, when I left, she was laying there just as sick as she was when I got there. And I thought, Lord, I know I didn't miss it. And surely with that confirmation, that, that, but then the Holy Ghost brought that word back to my mind that you lay hands on the sick and they will recover. See, by faith, I had to say, she was healed, okay? Well, we left, and, and I told her, I said, you expect God to be making you better moment by moment, hour by hour. The next day, she got up out of bed. She began to sweep her floors. She cooked her husband's supper. She was uh, doing the things that she normally did. By Sunday of the next week, she was sitting in her regular pew, Worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah. See, when you obey the Lord, God does the work. Well, where do you touch a person when you lay hands on them? You know, you got to be careful these days. You got to make sure that you're appropriate in everything that you do. I always like to have men lay hands on men and women lay hands on women. Sometimes you have to have a woman help you to lay hands on a man. And if that's the case, or a man help pray for a woman, if that's the case, it's always best that a man just touch the top of the head or the, uh, the touch of the forehead here, maybe the jaw right there, whatever the Spirit of the Lord will allow, but, but uh, at, at worst, the shoulder, but no, no further, no further. I always ask my wife when I have to pray for somebody of the opposite sex to 
lay hands on the areas of the body that, that might be uh, more delicate and inappropriate to touch, but mostly the head. I like to pray and ask the Lord as I'm laying hands on that sick person to see them heal. I've seen God miraculously heal broken arms. I've seen it several times. I've seen God take tumors the size of grapefruit and disappear in front of my eyes. I've seen people walking and leaping and praising God who was crippled. I've seen God turn people around that, that, that were uh, just so discouraged because of sickness. But I know this. We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith, not by our symptoms. We walk by faith not by how we feel. I'm moved by the word of God. I want to quote R.W. Schambach who wrote this statement in his book, God's Guarantee to Heal. He said, the moment hands are laid on you, remember Calvary and claim every one of its benefits. Begin by faith to act healed. Start doing the things your affliction kept you from doing. It's important to recognize the one who's laying hands upon the sick is doing so under divine authority. Remember that this believer has been authorized by Christ to loose you from your infirmity. Hallelujah. Second way you can get your healing is through the anointing with anointing oil. Now there's nothing sacred about this oil. Um, it, I don't even know who made this, but there's nothing any different than this oil. It's not more sacred than the oil you got in your kitchen. And many times I've taken the kitchen oil and laid hands on somebody. Folks, James 5, 4 through 15 says, Is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up. And if he's committed sins, it will be forgiven. Sick, let him call for the elders of the church. Who are the elders? Every church is a little bit different in how they're structured. To me, elders could be ministers or mature saints. A mature saint can be 25 years old that's really seeking the face of God. Can be a 15-year-old if they're really seeking the face of God. If they're really hungry for God and they've touched heaven and they know how to pray, they're an elder, and they can lay hands on the sick, anointing them with oil. Is there any healing power in the oil? No, it's all about obedience. Just like God said, don't, don't partake of that fruit in the garden. There was no reason really why except to say, don't do that. And God said, all right, I want you to get in the ark. And there's no rain, no water, no flood, but I want you to get in the ark. It's time. You know, it's all about obedience. Prayer, laying on of hands with anointing oil. Elijah told Naaman, he said, I want you to go down to the Jordan River and dip seven times. Well, he said, couldn't you tell me a cleaner river? He was offended. But you see, there was no earthly reason why he needed to go down to that Jordan River and dip seven times except God told him to, and you need to do what God tells you to do. And when you walk in obedience, you can get your healing. Hallelujah. Third way, praying one for another. James 5, 16 through 18 says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. This is why we have prayer chain ministry. This is why so oftentimes when you're sick and you can't get a hold of me, you'll call Sister LaRue or you'll call Sister um, uh, Lee, and you'll say to them, hey, I need a touch in my body. Will you get the saints to pray? And we pray one for another that we might be healed. 
This is why we take prayer requests oftentimes in certain church services. And this is why it's so important to pray for other people and to put people on a prayer list and pray and seek the face of God because prayer works. The next uh, method could be through the gifts of healing coupled with other gifts of the Spirit. I've watched uh, many times in my own ministry, the Lord give me a word of knowledge about a certain person. He would show me their face and he would say, I'm going to heal them of this particular disease. And then I would say, Lord, if they show up in the house today, I'll pray over them and I'll tell them that they're going to be healed in Jesus' name. And every time God has done that and I saw them walk in the door, I called them out and God has honored his word. My son Joseph told me the other day, he's gone for the last four or five years to the prison or the jail every Tuesday night in, in Cross City, Florida, where he lives. And he goes to that jail every Tuesday night, and he preaches to the prisoners, and he'll have anywhere from 20 to 50 prisoners come in, in, in their little uh, chapel area where they eat in, in their dining hall. And, and, and he told me, he said, Daddy, over the last four or five years, I've had over 500 inmates healed by the power of God. God has touched them one after another through mostly the gifts of the Spirit. He'll, he'll start to pray and he'll say, all right, let's seek the face of God. Let's touch God. And then all of a sudden, the Spirit of God will reveal this to him. And he'll say, all right, there's somebody here that's got this particular issue. And they'll stand up and he'll call them out and he'll pray over them and they're healed. And I am so blessed. That, that God is using him in the gifts of healing, hallelujah, coupled with the word of knowledge. Evangelists and pastors oftentimes pray over people and have a word of knowledge. Uh, I used to have an evangelist. He's gone on to be with the Lord, but his name was Virgil Johnson, and Virgil could come to a service, and, 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 and uh, the Spirit of God would show him a white light over different people's head. And then when he... Uh, uh, called them out, the Holy Ghost would show him exactly what was wrong with them. And he'd say, you got this particular problem. There was nobody in the back writing down prayer cards or anything like that. It was pure Holy Ghost, pure Holy Ghost, pure Holy Ghost. And Virgil would, would pray over everyone that the light came over their head. And dozens and dozens of people would be healed miraculously by the power of the Holy Ghost. Next thing is prayer cloths, prayer napkins, whatever you want to call them. Acts 19, verse 11 through 12. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hand of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick and the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out of them. And so God can use something as simple as a prayer cloth that we have prayed over and anointed and said, God, let your power flow even through this little napkin. And a lot of times people will put them in their pocket. They'll put them in their billfold and they'll put them in their, in their, in their uh, some people have even uh, tacked it to their clothes through a safety pin of sorts. Uh, uh, others have shoved it under their husband or wife's pillow, uh, under the sheet where they sleep so they won't even know about it. But the power of God can flow even through something as an unusual miracle with a napkin. Let me just say this. God can heal you any way he wants to. I'm open to whatever he does. Now, lastly, let me tell you, how do you keep your healing? You know, it's sad. I, I watched a man get healed of deafness. I watched him completely healed of deafness. The, the evangelist prayed over him. And, and, and he, he, he took his hearing aids out and, and the evangelist got behind him and he whispered words and the man could, could spout them off just like that. He could hear out of the ear that he'd been deaf in. When he got home, all of a sudden his ear went back deaf. You know, if, if something like that happens and you all of a sudden the symptoms return, you know what that tells me? That tells me it's the devil. It tells me it's the devil. Because here's the thing. God doesn't heal you and take it back. 
And so Matthew 12, 43 through 45 says, when the unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to the house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. I watched my dear mama. I watched her. Uh, she had a, a surgery she had to have that required her to come off of all of her psychotropic medications. And I watched mama come off of that stuff for a week with no withdrawal, and that was almost in, unheard of. Uh, she had no complications, no problems, no shakes, no dizziness, no nothing. God had healed her. Our church had fasted and prayed and sought the face of God for her healing. She drove down a couple of hundred miles to where my church was in Tampa, Florida at the time. And she prayed. we, we prayed over her and God healed her. Well... She got scared. The devil started talking to her and said, you know what? You might get bad again. You need to go back and take that medicine. And, and, and you know, if I'm healed, I don't need to go back and take the medicine. Now, if I, if I still have symptoms, then yeah, I probably need to do it. But if I've got, I have no symptoms, uh, you know, which she had none, she needed to stay off of that medicine. Well, you know what happened? She went right back on it. And you know what? Just like that scripture I just read, she had seven times worse. She had she wound up in, in mental uh, wards over and over and over after that because she allowed that devil to come back and torment and attach itself to her body. Ephesians 4, 27 says, Give no place to the devil. Give no place to the devil. Tell the devil to get out of here. You cannot be in my body. You cannot give me these symptoms. Keep reminding yourself of the scriptures. Keep reminding yourself that James 4, 7 says, Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You get into the presence of God. You begin to worship the Lord. Get you some Holy Ghost music that will just encourage you and strengthen you and, and, and get you in the place of God's throne room. And then you worship the Lord and then you start rebuking the devil in the name of Jesus. And you know what? He's got to flee. He's got to flee. Do you need healing in your body today? We're going to pray right now for Jesus Christ to heal your body and to set you free by the power of the Holy Ghost. Father, in the name of Jesus, I put my hand out as a point of contact to say, be healed in Jesus' name. Diabetes, you've got to go in the name of the Lord Jesus. Heart condition, you've got to be whole in Jesus' name. Symptoms of high blood pressure, you've got to go in Jesus' name. Body be healed through the blood name Jesus. Be healed through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Through the name that's above all names. Jesus, be healed right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, send your healing virtue into their body. And oh, I want you to lay hands on the part of your body that's sick. Right now, lay hands on the part of the body that's sick. And you just agree with me right now. Father, as we lay hands on the sick, as we lay hands on the sick right now, we are expecting them to recover, to recover, to recover in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for healing in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, if you're listening to this message today and you're not right with God, you know, one of the first things you've got to do to be healed is to get right with God. If you've never given your heart and life to Jesus Christ, or if you're a backslider and you need to get right with God, you just pray this prayer with me right now and say, Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life. I believe that you uh, died for my sins, and I believe you paid the price for my sins on the cross of Calvary. I believe you rose from the dead and you're coming back for me. I believe it with all of my heart. 
Come into my heart. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. In Jesus' name, make me like you for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. If you prayed that prayer, send me a private message so we can send you some Christian literature to help you in your spiritual journey. And we're always available to help you any way we can in your walk with God. If you have your tithes to send in, send it in to uh, 816 Columbus Street, uh, Waycross, Georgia, 31503. If you need to catch up your tithes for the year, then you need to send it to that same address. God bless you. If we can do anything for you, just get in touch with us. Otherwise, we'll be back with you Wednesday night in the service uh, online or next Sunday in person or on Facebook or uh, YouTube. God bless.